is is the flaming freeway the fleshy freeway alive because remember it's got a sternum with a rib cage and it's got boba it concrete. is alive please if you if this is the first episode you're listening to and you're still listening <laughs> go listen to other episodes first okay or else this isn't gonna make sense <laughs> Welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Hannah Hillam. And I'm Kava Taharian. Welcome back to the show. It is our 25th episode, dude. Did you know that? I did you know. Did. How are you feeling? I think it's crazy that we've done this. Yeah. You know? I think so too. Yeah. Like we um, went to do it. You're like, we'll just see, we'll just see where this goes. If the first three episodes suck, we'll just quit. <laughs> and we yeah, haven't. It's it's great. It's um it's warm. It's very warm. Uh, it's hot in outside. Here. It's hot. Yeah. yeah. I thank you for turning off the air conditioning. I was very excited that uh, yeah. we were gonna <clears throat> be able to you actually want, have good audio. You want me to be angry? That's why you're excited. <laughs> you want me to be? You want me to have short patience? That's fine. Yes. Not that you asked, but I'm feeling good today. Do you know why? Why? Because why? Yesterday was the first day of summer. It was the summer solstice. Oh, that's right. And that means it is the longest day of the year. There's the most amount of daylight in the year. Ew. And as you know, there are many ancient Persian traditions that happen, much oh, like yeah. Noruz. Remember Noruz we celebrate? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> we jump over it's the fire like and all that. The turning of the sea. It's all very ancient. Yeah. There is actually a, a really important tradition for the Persians that happens on the summer solstice. Oh. But um, you might not have heard about it, but I wanted to tell okay. you before we started the episode. So when the summer solstice happens, I, as a Persian man, I turn to my wife, Sarah, and I say, light of my life, my love, apple of my eye, do you know what today is? And she says, yes, it's the summer solstice. And we both look at each other and we nod and I say, do you know what that means? And she says, of course, of course I know what that means. And I say, let the ceremony begin. And she says, oh. very well. And I go and I go into my closet and I have this bag. It's like this, this velvet bag, like a tiny bag. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful, ancient. Very ceremonial. I take the bag out and I stand okay. by Sarah and I unsheath this item that's in it. And do you know what this item is? I have a lot of things I want to say, but... It is, it is no. my clippers. And I say to oh. Sarah, it is time for me to shed my winter coat. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> and she begins Just... to shave my back. Oh. And afterwards, <laughs> Sorry. that's for you to do. I guess you can't. I guess you can't. I reach. can't. I can't do it. This is why that's love. it's that's the love. spouse, the spousal support. And afterwards, <laughs> I emerge. <laughs> I emerge like a snake who's shed its skin or any kind of lizard. <laughs> and I'm a new man. And I am prepared. <laughs> I'm armed <laughs> to deal <laughs> with the heat of the summer. And oh. once again, after many moons, I can feel the shirt on my back, which is Whoa. why today I am coming to you feeling excellent because this beautiful 100% cotton shirt. <laughs> oh. Oh. No, you it's just I it? can I can feel it on my skin and it feels wonderful. So I'm I so will say, excited. Congratulations on losing all that hair on your back. <laughs> I hope Sarah is recovering. Um, also, no one ever shaves my back hair. So listen. You're going to have to talk to your spouse about that because that's that's the next level of love. <laughs> I anyway. will say after shaving my legs, nothing feels yes. better than like sliding into bed and being like, exactly. <laughs> you yeah, know? once you start to feel fabric, it's great. And then now yeah. I feel it. So well, I'm ready to tackle. I'm ready to tackle the summer. Thank you. You got your summer. You got your summer body ready. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted yep. to gross you out before we started. It didn't gross me out. Oh, yeah. OK, good. <laughs> Try again. Try again. Uh, uh, is that really like that's actually like a thing people do or that's just what you do? Uh, that is an ancient Persian tradition of having clippers and shaving your back. No, I'm joking. Uh -huh. Of course, it's not a real old Persian tradition. Oh, <laughs> but I, amongst I us, maybe, it informally it, it is. Was like a, yeah, that's what I, I mean. I like how like, you half it believed like it. A... Yes. <laughs> you no, know, at one you point. Said, when I... you said ancient velvet bag, I was like, this is this is all BS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, See, we're on to episode 25, which is a very important number in Persian. No, it's not. Uh, we're just excited <laughs> about it being 25. In Pers Persian numerology dictates that this episode needs to be all about bloodshed. And it is. It is. Yeah, it is about bloodshed. Let me check um, that again. Normally, 
<laughs> no, it's great. We're going to go with it. I loved it. Great. <laughs> I'll, all I was going to say is that if I went to my ancient roots, all we would be doing is looking at stones and chanting big, tall stones that we put up. That's that's what I they, mean. That's, that's cool, too, though. Sure. <laughs> Somebody yeah. else to look at some rocks. <laughs> what else are you um, going to do in England? Anyway, episode 25. So we have been talking about yes. this for a few weeks because we decided that it's crazy that we've gotten this far. We didn't think we'd right. actually I didn't. It just it's not so much that we never thought we would make it to 25. It's just more like, oh, I can't believe that. That's like a significant number of episodes. I didn't think ahead this far. Like I know. <laughs> Except I for this week's episode, which you very much did. For like months. <laughs> yeah. So we thought uh, rather than doing our typical uh, two episodes, sorry, two tabs for this week's episode, we uh, as much as this show is about research and stuff that we've learned and discussed, mm -hmm. it is also about sort of like nonsense, nonsense, surreal, uh -huh. you know, absurdist storytelling that we very much love to engage in. And, and as we go along with each episode, as they sort of like fly through, we were like, man, I forgot about like this gag for that we had from like <laughs> episode two or episode four. So we thought it would be fun to do, um, uh, what are we calling it? Uh, the We're calling Kuma Tab? It Kuma Tab, <laughs> parentheses, 500 open stabs. And it is going to be, the. it is pretty much like Smash Brothers, except we're gonna take, there's gonna be eight contestants, and we're gonna, I took them, I chose them from all the different stories we've done, and they're going to battle each other. And during each round, quote unquote, you, uh, you and I, Kave, are gonna discuss who would win. And then at the end, we're going to see who triumphs overall. This is um, extremely exciting because usually I go insane with prep for everything. <laughs> um, Hannah has very graciously taken the lead on this one and yeah. uh, done essentially like all of it. Um, so <laughs> I, had so I get fun. to just sh I get to just roll in and show mm -hmm. up and be like, yeah, sure. I never get to be like this unprepared. So I'm actually very happy about this. Um, kind of fun, right? Yeah. Let me... Oh, it's like a group one project second. that you didn't do anything yeah. for. Why don't you uh, explain yeah. how this works? Uh, I believe you have like like little piece sheets of paper oh, yeah. with names or so, how to explain all this to me because I've actually here. I've never done any of this like before. I've never. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, as far me as like neither. podcasting <laughs> and whatnot's concerned. Oh, I've done the only time I've ever done like a like a bracket is during Magic yeah. the Gathering competitions with my friends, and that was like twelve years ago. So I know what I'm mm. doing. Uh, yeah. And so. <laughs> So here's how it's going to work. So okay. I have chosen 16 quote unquote fighters and we're going to choose okay. eight because time. Uh, and I will go ahead. For those of you watching the video, I have a box that my, I guess my daughter drew the alphabet on. So it's really gonna, cool. Yeah. looks like, like a madman's graffiti. Um, but I'm going to pick two names from here and those are going to be the first round contestants. Okay. And okay. then I'm going to pick a location, a battleground. From this one and that is where they're this going is to awesome fight. i am so, so excited for this they come with strengths and weaknesses and the battleground will dictate how easy or hard it is for them to win or lose so okay let's say they're on the sand that plays into it we have to keep wow. that in mind while we're talking really or... Hannah? again sand <sighs> I sensitivity <adjust> training <laughs> look. yeah so let's say for example they're fighting in the air that has to be taken okay. into consideration Okay. Um, also, their strengths and weaknesses. So I'll get into those. As we pick them, I'll tell you the details of each of them. Hold on. And so in the interest of time, because you and I are not the best at keeping track all the time. Yes. We're going to try and stick to about 10 minutes-ish. Yep. 10 minutes-ish for, for each one. Okay. I'm going to set a timer every time you do it, just so uh, we can keep track of it. Um, but of course, we're not going to be like strictly beholden to that. But just as like a, a loose, right. whenever you're ready, tell ready? me to hit. Yeah. Okay. Go. Okay. Round one is a 10th century Viking versus Richard Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> Richard and Nixon over next. They're, go they're going to be fighting in a Taco Bell. So <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> All right. So Richard Nixon, Richard okay. Nixon, his strengths are he is, he comes equipped with two giant pandas. All right. Oh, and right. he can harness their their powers or whatever those okay. powers may be. Shitting those left and his, right everywhere. Yeah, yes. Those are his only weapons in this. Oh. Uh, his strengths are he's the commander in chief of the United okay. States, but not okay. anymore. Okay. Uh, he's good at wiretapping and he's good at lying. And his weaknesses <laughs> is that he's sloppy. He doesn't do any of it well. So there's Richard Nixon versus okay. 10th century Viking. The Viking has spears and swords. 
uh, his strengths are no fear of death and a lot mm-hmm. of hallucinogens. And mm. his weakness is that he's drunk. So, <laughs> question. They're in the Taco Bell. Yes. In the Taco Bell. Are we yeah. talking about, like, is it just a Taco Bell that they're fighting in? Does business as yes. usual continue in the Taco <laughs> Bell? Like, can Nixon go order something from the Taco Bell yes. counter and bring it back to feed his pandas? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. okay so, great. Look, so I'm already ha- going to say, I think yeah, the go Vikings going to win, but no, we got to actually No, go I don't think so think at so? all. No. Okay. Explain. I think Ni- Richard Harry. Nixon, with his with his money that he's probably stolen from somebody, goes. Yeah. He goes to the counter and he just orders like, "What's the most shitty stomach churning thing that you could have possibly gotten for a panda?" Right. So like, I don't know, like a ten pack of of bean burritos. Yeah. Feeds the pandas immediately when they're sleeping. He takes them like bagpipes and just goes. <laughs> I guess that's true because the the Viking will just slip because he's drunk. Right. Just also, slipping, slipping Richard it. Nixon has listened to this podcast and he's learned from the sperm whales when they travel in packs that hot diarrhea is this. something that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you don't think know he's what he's doing this. in the afterlife. Oh yeah, I was gonna say he's dead in the ground. Yeah. Okay, but like, okay, let's say he's ordering right. That Viking okay. has a like yeah. it can easily charge at him. Can and I get just... uh, one? <laughs> <laughs> Gigantic cheese and tostada. <laughs> Extra beans. I can't talk also, like him. Yeah. Also, okay. here's the other thing. Is the Viking going to be distracted by the fact that he's, he's what is a Taco Bell? He's never seen a Taco oh. Bell. He doesn't know what fast food is. He doesn't, he's never lived Moss. What if oh. Richard Nixon lies and just gives him a Baja Blast and the Viking has it and loses his mind? Do you think he'd lose his mind? All the chemicals. It would immediately destroy his ancient like stomach. <laughs> right, he wouldn't know how to handle it. I don't necessarily, or maybe he would just get like so hyped up that he would just start chopping off heads. It's, I don't know. A lot of other people would die, but I don't think Richard Nixon will. No, he's too. I think he's, he might be He's right. smart. He would figure out a way to like yeah. Nixon. Go ahead. We're gonna say. And I bet. I bet he's weirdly fast. You know what I mean? Nixon. He seems like he could. Yeah. Yeah. He seems like he could dodge really easily. I get that vibe from he's, him. He is the ultimate politician. Don't forget. Like he was the greatest at like manipulating things and figuring out a way to like, you know, convince, you know, put one thing against each other. So it's just a matter of like, what is Nixon going to do to manipulate this Viking? He would not try and fight him head on. That's not Nixon's deal. So we're saying that while the Viking has culture shock, Nixon's going to feed his pandas like 500 burritos and just (laughs) wait. Okay, so while the pandas are sleeping and processing those burritos, he's just going to dodge that Viking as he drunkenly... Or he's just going to figure out a way to be like, oh, I'm not Richard Nixon. I'm actually an employee of this Taco Bell. Hold on. Let me go get... <laughs> like, Nixon's smart. He's a corrupt. A Viking. Yeah. Well, He'll he doesn't know. But that's the thing. He's going to be like, there's all these other people here. So he's oh, just going to be like, no, actually, that's not the dude you're supposed to kill. You're not going to get into Valhalla if you kill me. Like, it's this... You're I don't right. know. That's my also, thought anyway. Like you said, he's Nixon- a liar. He's a huge liar. He can yeah. probably get everyone in the Taco Bell on his side. Exactly. And they could overtake. Easy. Yeah, he's gonna, easily he, overtake. The he's going to be like, the silent majority doesn't want Vikings <laughs> in their Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I already love this episode so much. <laughs> it's so much fun. Okay, so what's the what's the final blow? How does he kill him? But here's the thing. Here's the twist that we have not okay. discussed. These Vikings, based on the account that you read for us, yeah. is totally used to just being disgusting and covered in shit. True. So even being covered with copious amounts of panda diarrhea might not do anything to this Viking. But it'll make him slip. That's the thing. That's the only saving grace is that he yeah. might slip like on a banana peel and like hit his head somewhere and die. But okay. I don't know. Again, okay. I have my own personal bias where I want Richard no, Nixon I... to win just because it's funny <laughs> to have him beat a Viking with pandas, even though it it's totally funny. illogical. But I do think that culture shock aspect of it is going to have a, it's going to give a huge weakness to that Viking, especially because yeah. there's only one of him. And if he's in a Taco Bell full of like people <laughs> who don't look like him, <laughs> he's going to flip out. There's a there's a simple way to get around this as well. Like we said, we just give him like a taco. Yeah. An ancient Viking has never even had a taco. <laughs> Tacos it's are just, delicious. Can you imagine him. <laughs> being like. 30 years old and being like, I've never eaten a taco. And then you eat a taco and you're like, what have oh, I been doing with my life? <laughs> I've been killing all the wrong people. I've been angry I for do- no reason. All I needed was a taco. Yeah. 
You know what? I, I, I don't think know. you're right. No, I think you're right because the power of Taco Bell and the power of Richard Nixon. Combined. Yeah, I think I think um, absolutely. N- Nixon would know how to use his surroundings to advantage his position in a way that the like if they were out in the woods or yeah. if they were out like on the sea, Nixon's dead for sure. Oh, but for Taco sure. Bell but is just one the of these Taco things. Bell. Exactly. Uh, that's okay, my let's thought. Say, I agree. I agree. Nixon wins. Okay. How, how does he kill the Viking? Pandas? Or does he kill him? Does he submit? Does he make the? Does he have to die, or can he submit? Yes. No. Yes. He, he has to die. Okay. Yes, I've decided um, that right now. <laughs> I think Nixon figures out a way to not kill him directly, but frame him for some sort of crime that results oh, in him yeah. getting the death penalty. Like he blames, I don't know, Vietnam on him or something, or is it Cambodia? Yeah. Or he sends him to Cambodia. I don't know. He sends him to. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll find a way. Yeah, he'll stick he'll, him on an airplane, which will make the Viking have a mental thing. breakdown. Yeah, <laughs> and then some the some himself. heart attack. Yeah, <laughs> if, again, Nixon won't do the dirty work himself. He'll figure yeah, he out won't. a way for somebody else to do it. Okay, Richard Nixon wins, beats that okay. Viking fair and square. Wow. That, was <laughs> that was that was like a pretty clear cut one, though. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on, let me write this down. Nixon versus Viking, and uh, Nixon won. <laughs> If, if Richard Nixon wins all of these, I'll be so mad. I'll be, I'll be so, so mad happy. at you. Is he your? He's your. He is your. Your horse in this race, isn't he? He's always my horse in every race because never <laughs> bet against Nixon. <laughs> I have a uh, one of my best friends from grad school. I think I told you this. He was he, Chuck. He's obsessed with Richard Nixon, and like yes. he just has this period where all he read was about Nixon. It's like his favorite like Shakespearean political figure. So like. <laughs> Through osmosis, I've become obsessed with Richard Nixon just as a character, as I've said before. So Nixon's That's always funny. And Reagan with you, that horrible picture you send me oh. all the time of Reagan, <laughs> of Reagan wearing sweatpants on Air Force One. To be clear, every picture of Reagan is a horrible picture of Reagan because yeah. he's horrible. But yes, that devil. one where he's wearing sweatpants is the most disgusting thing you'll see. Oh, um, the sweatpants are too baggy in all the wrong places. Ew, it's so And gross. one of them is tucked into his shoe. One leg is tucked into his shoe. I've studied that picture because I drew it on your birthday. <laughs> you I drew did. it on your birthday present. <laughs> Which, by okay. the way, I don't know if you noticed, I put it up on to the mirror oh, behind me for this episode. Thank you, oh. Alyssa and Hannah. This is a wonderful Michelin Man poster that I referenced in that one episode. Yeah. Where he's taking the spare tire out of his stomach. I will get it <laughs> framed properly at some point, but I wanted to just show it off for this one. It looks great. I'm, it I, does. I, I want one now. I should have got myself one. Anyway. You should have gotten yourself one. Anyway, okay, continue. I, Who are we? Okay, round two is... Round two. A moon bat person <laughs> okay. versus... Versus an exploding whale. Okay. On an island made of Legos. <laughs> oh, okay. So, we got moon a, bat big, person. a big dead whale, because the whale is dead. Here's the thing. I'm going to give you the stats. Okay. The whale, the whale's weapon is literal tons of rotting guts, and its strength is can explode at any time, really. Uh, mm. And its weaknesses is, is it's dead and stationary. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, the moon bat person is I put with weapons. I just put not applicable because I have no idea. Do you remember anything mm. about them having weapons? There was nothing about them having weapons. Although, in theory, if we yeah. go back to um, the episode, somebody did Lunar 9-11. So You're at the right. very least, you can assume that there's airplanes that, that were built and they were box <laughs> cutters. <laughs> okay. These moon people have box cutters, all right? They have at least These... box cutters, yeah. And for those of you who don't... Oh, I was going to say, if you're listening to this and this is the first episode of this podcast you're listening to... Do not. <laughs> don't. Or you could. It's, it, it's still fun, but it's going to be more fun if you go back and listen to the rest. Yes. It's okay. Okay. Moon bat people that live on the moon. Okay. They're all covered in hair. They're pretty much naked and they are carrying box cutters. And uh, <laughs> their strengths are the power of flight and they're pretty decently ripped. Like they yeah, got they some shredded. muscle. And um, their weaknesses is that they can't stop 60 dining. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what we've got. <laughs> so here's okay. the thing. A whale can explode at any time. And you okay. can be careful, right? It's a ticking so time just bomb. Wait it out and then fly above all the viscera, or what? Here's my other question. Okay. Okay. These moon bat people—they live on the moon, so Don't, presumably oh, yeah. they're not breathing oxygen. 
<laughs> right? Because there's no oxygen. Are right. these, are, does being on earth, like, I don't know how it works. Like if you Good lived look. in space where there's no oxygen, if you have oxygen, do you die? I don't, this is too complicated of a science question. I immediately regret asking this. Yeah. But, but you can't we have stop. to stumble yeah. our way through it right now. Yeah. I think that for the purpose of the games, we're go- this yeah. game, we're going to say that they can survive on earth. It's fine. Yeah. They're not going to die from Maybe breathing Earth's air. Maybe gravity's going to be weirder. Like they won't be able to like... Right. Do you know how gravity works on the moon versus how it works on Earth yeah, in terms like, of like, is it lighter on the moon, right? You're lighter on the moon. Yeah. So yeah. you can bounce Right. Because there's no the atmosphere. Moon. That's right. But then if you come to Earth after, like that guy who went to space and he came yeah. back and he like couldn't walk because he was in space for so long. That has to do with um, the gravity was just right? too uh, heavy. It was just like too heavy. Hmm. All right. Well, they know. also have wings. Don't forget, actually, That's I guess. That's true. Okay. They have wings. So, <laughs> so like, like you said, let's just say all things are equal for the sake of simplicity. Okay. Yeah. Here's another question that I think is kind of okay. funny. Uh, what does it matter if the whale's already dead in terms of beating <gasps> the two of them? Oh, no. I didn't think about that. <laughs> the whale is pretty I... much a ticking time bomb. Okay. And if it explodes, all the those bats are just going to avoid all of the, first of all, all of the guts that are flying out everywhere. And second of all, all the Lego that gets exploded on the Lego island that they're right, on. Right, right, right. So and it's what a are floating the... Lego island, so it's tipping like this. Oh, <laughs> I remember now because I said that like all the trash Legos that are out in the yes. sea is going to make clip like tr- piles together. of trash click together because they're Lego pieces. That's right. Yeah. So it's a Lego trash island. It's a Lego trash island this with the bat tough. people on it. This one is tough. I mean, I think theoretically, if if the bat person tries to land any kind of blow on that whale, like you said, it's just going to explode. It explodes. Right. So but then they wait it out. <laughs> Should I bring in another competitor? I like this idea. We'll bring in a third person and see how this goes. Okay. And we're now bring the, in the, the dead person. whale can be part of like the uh, the environment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it can just be like a, like literally a ticking time bomb. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna bring in a different one. Okay. Yes, so. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm bringing in a third competitor, and it is okay. Nikola Jokic, oh! and he. <laughs> So it's him versus Moonbat people, but here's here's his his strengths. Okay, you ready for this? Yes. His weapon is just a basketball because he can throw those okay. things super fast. Yes. Uh, his strengths are he uh, is a horse whisperer. He can commune with horses. He's fast and he's tall. And his mm-hmm. um, his weakness is that he doesn't care about anything. That's so, true. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like will explode, not explode. It doesn't make a difference. No, doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this is tough. Now I have to well, argue now what? like. Now, now I'm like, I don't want Nicola to lose. I love Nicola. Well, you know might. that. Uh, okay. okay. He, here's the thing. He could destroy one of those bad people because they're only like four feet tall. That's true. And then also I would say normally I'd be like, well, if you saw a moon bat person, much like we were talking about with the Viking in Taco Bell, where yeah. it, wouldn't, it would have like culture shock. Most yeah. people on earth would be like, oh my God, it's a moon bat person. But Nicola Jokic is the one person who I, yeah. I think would just be like, yeah, whatever. It's a bat person. Fine. Doesn't, I'm going to go matter. to the horse. Yeah. Um, and he probably also, has some horses with him, right? Right. And also, I think he's, because he's a good dude, if the whale exploded, he would want to help clean up. Like, he has he a vested will, interest in cleaning up the whale who was exploded because he cares about animals deeply. So it oh. really depends on what the bat person's... <laughs> you're like, all, <laughs> you're getting all emotional. <laughs> I just have a soft spot for Nicola. I do, too. <laughs> Here's what I feel like. I feel like... Um, okay. If push comes to shove and he knows that he has will. to kill somebody right? Yeah. and he knows that he has to kill this thing, it's it's kill or be killed. Yes. And at this point, even though he doesn't care about anything, he does care about his family. He's got a little daughter and a wife and his, his siblings. So he's going to live for his family, not because of right. any kind of reason of vanity or, or money or anything like that. Yeah. So my guess would be he is going to tend to the whale and use oh. that as a distraction. <laughs> oh. For the bat is he, person. Is he going to explode the whale himself and that'll kill the bat person? With the basketball that he's going to throw from across the way. He's going to be yeah. like, oh my God, this whale's going to die. Right. Let's go get something to make sure that it's okay. And then, because he's a mensch, he's going to sit yeah. and clean up all the whale, everything, oh like my, I said. He's what not a gonna good leave. man. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's a trash pile of an island, he'd still be like, no, but that's not what this was meant to be. We need to make sure that the Legos are this pretty. This is the sanctity of life. Yes. <laughs> And He's I like the David Attenborough of horse, exploding whales. Yeah, I respect horse and whale alike. 
but I don't respect bat people. <laughs> they can all die. <laughs> here's the thing. I think I think he does win, and here's why. What you okay. said, and also because he can jump super high, and those things can mm. fly, and he can just reach up and grab one and rip its That's wings true. off. <laughs> no He's big tall. deal. I don't think he even has to jump. He just grabs it. Grabs one. Okay. Yeah. You okay? Nicola? Yeah, okay. I think you win. Nicola's the winner. Oh, my God. We're going to have maybe Nicola versus Nixon. Definitely Nicola versus oh Nixon. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh <no. laughs> I'm so stressed out right now. <laughs> this is supposed to be fun, and now I'm having a meltdown. and be like, I don't want this to happen because I love them both as characters so much. <laughs> don't oh, do this what? to me. <laughs> <laughs> Make a choice. All right. Uh, next, round three. You ready? Round three. Here, we have... A lobotomized housewife oh. versus <laughs> Peter, Peter Stump, the werewolf. Peter Stump. So okay. this is tough. And they're going to be fighting in <laughs> inside a UFO over Tehran. Oh! Inside so, of it. Inside, like floating over the city. Inside okay. of a UFO. Uh, I didn't in 1976? Think in 1976. And here are their strengths. Whoa. Ready here they're ready for their Whoa. stats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Lobotomized Housewife has her weapons are she dual wields kitchen knives. Okay. Uh her strengths are she's hopped up on, the, on amphetamines <laughs> and has superhuman rage. Superhuman strength from all the pent up rage. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Her weaknesses are that she's easily distracted because she's lobotomized <laughs> and she's apathetic because she's lobotomized. Because she's lobotomized. Peter Stump. His weapon is Satan's belt that turns yeah, him into a werewolf. Turns him into a werewolf. But that can also be taken off of him and he can turn not into a werewolf. He can turn back into a right. man. He also has claws. His strengths are the power of Satan himself. Mm-hmm. He can run fast and he's already an experienced killer. His weaknesses is he's scared of angry mobs and he has to turn back into a regular dude. Okay. Are there any UFO? Um, well, let's just say classic, classic 50s, 60s, 70s UFO. Green-headed alien. Flying saucer. Kind Flying of saucer. Yeah, oh, that's the other thing, too, is like we, what we haven't established is there are aliens inside the ship with them as well. Kind of like the Taco Bell one. Like what's... Oh, mo- yeah. Like they're uh, flying it around like they're doing the work. I think they're just watching. <laughs> no, I just was... mean like it's it's not like a drone. It's an actual spaceship. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I was just thinking an empty UFO, but then I thought there might need to be aliens. Or what do you could think? it be... A, maybe it could be... I'm just going to throw you options out here and you can decide. Okay. It could be a drone, which means no one being that. That's not fun. Then it could be an alien spaceship being flown by aliens, like some sort of military operation where they're going on a recon. Or third option, which I think would be really funny, is if it's an actual commercial airliner for aliens so that there's people in like business class and coach, but like on an alien spaceship. So you got a bunch of aliens who are crammed in waiting for their alien peanuts. Yes. They're they're sightseeing uh, Iran. (laughs) They're sightseeing Iran. And then- the 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 woman the sorry the lobotomized housewife and Peter Stump are somehow they got tickets to go on this commercial airline. <laughs> okay, and they're another, they're on a connecting night. flight to go to O'Hare or something or LAX. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. Okay, <laughs> okay. So gut gut feeling. I think Peter's gonna win, but I do think I the know. housewife has a big like. Here's the thing: Peter's a frail, like a fifty something year old dude, right? He's yeah. insane. He can turn into a werewolf. He's wearing a s- skin belt. Was it? Was it a belt made of skin? Uh, I can't remember. Belt was, yeah, yeah, it was a wolf belt. It was like a hairy wolf belt. Hide. I think is what it was. A hairy. Yeah. Okay. Because if that, if that, if the housewife can get that belt off of him, he's dead. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking too. Is like if we're gonna lean into the stereotype of the 1950s housewife, and also what we talked about with Peter Stump is like is, this is a fashionable belt. So the yeah. struggle is not even about the werewolf. It's about the struggle she of like who gets the belt. To be the, it's a battle of fashionistas <laughs> is what this is about. <laughs> but she's lobotomized. She doesn't care about that. Listen, she's above Iran. At this point, fashion trumps everything. You know, Persians are very particular about their styles. This is what we yeah. love. All, I've learned that. Then, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, a battle for fashion, fashion dominance. Okay. But here's the thing. Yeah. She's also mad because... She hates men, right? Because they've done nothing for her. Yes. And so if she can turn him back to a man, she's going to go nuts and kill him. Oh, I see. So uh, she's not afraid of the werewolf, but she's afraid of him as a man is what you're saying. I don't know. I can't tell if she would just get scared and not do anything or if she would actually kill him. It de- like for- I said, I think it depends on what's being threatened in this case. <laughs> They're fighting Does she care over about the belt? her own life? They're fighting over the no. belt. And I think, 
No. She doesn't care about her own life. I she doesn't think. care about her own life. She's on this plane with all these aliens. It doesn't matter that there's aliens around her. That's not anything no. that's of interest to she's her. She's on meth. <laughs> she is on it meth. That sense. is a good it point. It just makes sense. That she And there's meth strength. And the aliens are just part of it for her. She's yeah, on they're meth all just anyway. Watching. Do you think, what do you think the aliens are doing? <laughs> they're, you know what? I think they're like us where if someone's fighting on an airplane, we're all just like. Avoiding just like. Kind of quiet, down. but looking at them. And then maybe sometimes they, hey, hey, settle down now. Yeah. Uh, you know, like the old yeah. white dude on an airplane that says, come on now. Come on now, guys. They're all pressing the button on the on the ceiling. Beep, the... Beep, beep, beep. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> We've Flight complicated attendant. this so much. As opposed to everything else in our lives. Yeah, um, yeah. No. Okay. Simple. This is also hard. I think hard. secretly the uh, lobotomized housewife busts out a, a riveter gun and her, derivets. Oh. Remember? Because she sleep rivets. <laughs> that's what we talked about. Oh, is that her? Oh, that's right. She used to rivet. Yeah. In World so War let's, II. Let's just say that Whoa. for the sake of simplicity, that they're going to okay. fight no matter what. They're, they're, um, they're she, going to fight. She, she busts out the riveting gun, derivets the <laughs> alien spaceship. And takes them all and, down? And just everybody flies out. And they all die. <laughs> they're all done. Everyone's and, dead. And she just rivets it back because she doesn't care. Like you said, she's apathetic to oh. all of it at best. She's like, I don't care that I killed a bunch of al- innocent alien people. It's fine. That thing's dead. And oh. I got the belt. I win. She wants the belt and she doesn't care about life. She needs to look like the best wife in the Tupperware party that's going to happen. In the whole party. You're week. right. Yes. And that belt is unlike any other belt she's ever seen. It's designed. No one's going to have that. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. All right. I think Peter, Wolf, Peter Stump can turn into a werewolf, but he can't de rivet a plane. This is the way that she can do it. <laughs> she, and then, postscript, <laughs> extra bonus. She gets okay. a job at Boeing and becomes a billionaire, and then everything's fine because she's really she's good at the making planes. These yeah, <laughs> planes are falling apart. She's got to be like eighty-five now. She's still good. All right. You know what? I think the unpredictability of the meth mixed with the apathy of of the lobotomy is really going to make a good combo for her, and I think she will yeah. win. And I think you're right. And don't forget, she's kind of in a sleep. Like you said, she's in a sleep state. She's like half she's, awake, half asleep. She's more like. Lobotomies just kind of make you dull. Like you're awake. Okay. You're all right. I just, I guess, I mean, she's not full conscious. She's not super conscious of everything. Is she? She's, Again, I she's don't know. Not, everything's just dulled. So she's still dulled. the same person, but she just doesn't have the fight in her anymore. <laughs> or like the her personality is dull, but then the meth just makes her insane and it gives her meth mm, strength. Okay. And if we're going by the episode, then yeah, she used to rivet planes and boats together for the war. So yeah. Okay. I think that's going to come out. I think that has to be part of it. I think that has to yeah. be part of her win over. And we over can't Peter underestimate the rage of a, of an oppressed woman. Absolutely not. Absolutely yeah. cannot underestimate that. Yeah, I think that that's. Does the housewife win? There's plenty win? to go around. I think so. All right. What do housewife you think? Housewife wins. Yeah, I like that because I think Peter Stump has just like one or two things going for him, and if that belt comes off of him, he's dead. You know, easy. he's done. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They made him check it. Uh, they're like, sorry, <laughs> you can't bring this you on through take airport the security. Belt off. Yeah, she didn't make it through security. <laughs> okay, housewife. Interesting. Round four. Ready? You did not think I would go as insane with this as I did, although I guess oh, you also knew. knew that I would. No, I knew. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So we have. <laughs> I'm so happy. Okay, we have an army of trap jaw ants versus okay. the Michelin Man, oh. and they're going to be fighting in in air on Air Force One. Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> so Air Force One is flying. So many ants, just so many thousands of ants. Reagan is and in his sweatpants. Reagan's in the corner. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, already, he's already dead. The ants ate him. <laughs> <laughs> he tried stomping him. Nancy, get these ants out of here. Nance. Um, so here are their stats. You ready for this? Yes. Michelin Man. His weapon is he can remove his own body tires. Right, to, right. To hurt people. And his, his strengths are he's made of rubber, so he's kind of indestructible. Mm. And he can eat anything. That's true. Uh, he can. Yeah. And his his weakness is that he's French. That's all I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> it was late. Sacre so, bleu. He's, he's too French to function. But okay, maybe his weakness is that he can also just wants to eat everything because he likes eating. 
Um, oh, and the ants. Sure. Yeah, the ants. The ants. They have powerful jaws as weapons, and there's a billion of them. Uh, and, but they are susceptible to brainwashing, if you remember. Remind me again, because we went over several ants in that episode. Um, the trap which ones are these? Are the ones that behead other ants. Okay. And, and then they stick them on the pike or whatever. Yeah. They stick them in their. Yeah, but then they could easily be brainwashed by the kidnapper ants who like come in and take their babies. Okay. So Air Force One, if I remember yeah. correctly, we've got it's broken up into separate sections. That's right. And there is a kitchen in the back of Air Force One where they're cooking oh. full on meals. So I okay. think off the bat, that is going to distract the ants and their their attention is going to be oh. split between trying to oh, kill right. the Michelin man, but also there's a bunch of delicious food in the back, in the dumper right. of the plane. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. You called it the dumper. Well, so then does the Michelin man also go back there because he's hungry and he's the Michelin man? That's a good question. What is the Michelin man doing? He is he's, known. He, no, he's drinking a cocktail of glass and nails. That's right. Like that he photo. is drinking a cocktail. He's making business deals. He's the, he's like the corrupt senator yeah. in the front dealing with Reagan, being <laughs> like, oh. He and Reagan are machination, uh, machinations. Or they're, wait, no, I don't know. They're the Michelin man. No, no, no. They're kissing for sure. French. <laughs> French kissing. I mean, obviously. he's French. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the question. Okay. Because remember, the Michelin man was complicit accidentally with the Nazis, In but the Nazis. then he flipped. He didn't flip technically. Oh. He just accidentally made it happen for the Nazis. But then he redeemed himself by being like, "We'll print a new special edition for the That's allies right. to go in when they're going to storm the beaches of Normandy." That's right. So we're going to have to assume that the he's French, but he's on the side of the United States. He's on our side. Yeah, he's look, on our side. The French are wonderful. Okay. The French are great. Yeah. So I think the, the ants- Michelin man's going to win. Okay. How does he win? Does he go around stomping all of them? Yeah. He's made of rubber tires. He can just roll all over and run them over and destroy oh, them. As long as he you- can kill their queen, they flip out and go all over the place. Here's the other thing, too, is that he's essentially made of like seven, eight different tires, or, and probably more yeah. than that. Like, I mean, I, mean, I don't oh, even know like how many we can count 20. here. Like, let's just say 20 different tires. You could just separate all those different tires and just start yeah. rolling them all through. So 20 yeah. <laughs> different tires are rolling over, killing ants all at once. All at once. Well, they're trying to find food because they get distracted because they're stupid. And, and then the journalists small, are all there. Yeah, they're biting. Look, the journalists are just getting bitten. Let's face it. <laughs> just getting the ant bites. Ant bites. No, they're trying and to steal everything. Violent. I just I just oh, think this turbulence. is an open and shut case. I think Michelin Man, win, man wins no problem. Okay. All right. I won't what argue with think? that. Yeah, sure. Think, Let's do I it. Think I think those ants yeah. are just... There's, there's not enough of them to take down a rubber man, a giant rubber man. <laughs> or if they bite the rubber, it doesn't do anything, unfortunately. It doesn't do for anything, them. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think he's and kind he's of just indestructible. Eat them. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think you're right. I think that's and the And even whole if point. he does nothing, the ants are going to slowly eat away at him and then die of like eating rubber. That's also a good point. Yeah, even yeah. if they did try and kill him, they would die in the process. They wouldn't man. be able to digest the rubber. Sorry. Sorry, ants. You guys suck. Yeah. You're dead. They don't suck. Ants we love them. Versus, they're fine. Alyssa's very happy about this outcome. Yeah, she hates ants. Okay. Very deeply. So we're down to the the semifinals. Oh, already? Already. How much okay. of time do we have? How long Hold have on. we been we're, going? We're only about 40-ish minutes into it. We could probably keep going if you want. You want to? That might be. I don't know. How many we got left? We got, um, but that would be double we, the amount. Yeah. So let's just keep it at this and let's okay. make them a little longer. Okay. All right, we got to add some cool music. The semifinals. <laughs> semifinal. <laughs> that that's the song. We got to add cool music. Semifinals. Semifinal. Semifinal. Kuma tab. Kuma tab. Kuma tab. Kuma tab. Kuma tab. And in this corner, we've got ready. On in this corner, we've got Nixon versus Nicola. No. How are you determining who needs to go pitted against each other? Because they're in the little bracket. Damn it. Oh, yeah, that's right. You got to show your cool bracket to everybody. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, just, I made a bracket. Oh, Nicola versus Nixon. Yeah. What's the location? I guess you got to oh, full, yeah. find a new location, location right? Okay, ready? Yes. They will be fighting in, on top, on top of the burning MacArthur maze. Oh, this is like, so, wow. Know. This is operatic. I know. Oh, so the MacArthur goes. maze. <laughs> Uh, the MacArthur Maze is this this overpass in California that caught on fire. 
back in 2007. And this is a burning MacArthur Mays overpass, okay? On top, we got Nixon standing there with his two pandas and then Nikola Jokic. And he has some horses <laughs> and some basketballs. This is, this is so epic. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, a, <laughs> this image is washing over me right now. And I'm like, dear Incredible. Lord, the human mind cannot comprehend this. I just, I think that Nixon is absolutely at a disadvantage here. I think that okay, he's go. Why? short, he's old, <laughs> sorry, but he's he's out of shape, he's old. Well, actually, I don't think he's out of shape. I think he's like weirdly spry. Yeah. But there's he's no Brazilian. Taco Bell to feed. There's no Taco Bell to feed these pandas. That's true. He is at a disadvantage about the, pan, about the Taco Bell. And Nicola has horses that he can command, because remember, he's a horse whisperer, and he also mm-hmm. has like area like volley like he can kill he can just throw a basketball straight at nixon's dumb head and knock him unconscious <laughs> that's why, however that's why i think okay but there is a flaming overpass that's about to that's collapse true. at some point so that is the x factor oh, here in which it doesn't matter how much nicola can control nixon will play right. dirty and he will figure out a way he will right. again he will not fight him one-to-one he will not i'm sorry he will not fight him one-on-one like hand-to-hand he will he figure out a way to let the environment do the work for him because that is consistent with Nixon. You're right. So it's really a matter of <laughs> dodging. Wait, hold on. Hold on. In this scenario, okay. <laughs> okay. I just okay. remembered my entire two tabs that I did. Um, uh huh. Is, is the flaming freeway, the fleshy freeway alive? Because remember, it's got a sternum with a rib cage and it's got boba it concrete. Is alive. It is alive. Okay, so that's another but X factor that we have to consider. It's wounded because it's on fire. This right. overpass is wounded. Please, if you if this is the first episode you're listening to and you're still listening, <laughs> go listen to other episodes first, okay, or else this isn't going to make sense. So, so is the, fl- the fleshy is freeway overpass, it is it is screaming. It is on fire. <laughs> it is upset. <laughs> it's just screaming. It's just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Nixon's like can't stand this. Oh. He can't handle the screaming. I think Nicola would 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 stay cool through all of this. Okay, how does he stay cool? How does he do it? Do he he's, look. Have you seen him play? He can like dodge and jump and. Oh no no! I'm sorry. How jump, does he? How does he kill? His, how does he kill Nixon? Oh, oh uh, brute, brute strength. Yeah. He just goes over, just punches him as hard as he can. Yeah. Punches him right in his face. Okay. With a bat, or or first he first he throws a, he throws the basketball at him because he's good at aiming too because he's a pro. And that basketball just nuts, hits him right in the face or wherever. Maybe he takes out the pandas, but he wouldn't. He loves the pandas. Here's the thing, and okay. you might not know this: Richard Nixon was a football player in his youth. What? He is an athlete. Oh. So I don't know how good he was, but I do know that Nixon had some athletic abilities and musical abilities which i think is crazy like weird like piano and all this stuff yeah what yes yeah. i kind of love him <laughs> <laughs> that just added so much to his character he's insane um <clears throat> yeah so let's just assume just to make this fun is that nixon is able to based on his previous experience of being an athlete like in high school a little bit He's able to dodge these throws. Like he's equally okay. pitted against him in terms of. So we got to take sportsmanship out of this. So sports are no longer an element. So we're just going to go okay. based off of pure right. <laughs> <laughs> intellect. Pure intellect? Oh, I still or think empathy. Nicola's got it. Nicola. Here's what I think. I think the thing that Nicola has over Nixon is a love of animals yeah. and an ability to um, get animals to love him. So <gasps> while pandas. Nixon is trying to push shit out of the pandas and like use it, <laughs> Nicola is faster than any human being on earth cleaning up all that shit. Cause he's, we know yeah. that that's a fact that that's the Sh- thing that he likes to do to make he them does. feel comfortable. He shovels so, the, the stables. Yeah. So immediately he's just stables. like, he's just like, <laughs> like shovel, 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 <laughs> like in fast speed. Right. <laughs> and next thing you know, in between napping, these pandas look over and they're like, this Nicola guy is like a super nice dude. He's looking yeah. out for us. He's trying to clean. And they switch sides. They do. And then, they switch sides. And then he's got horses, pandas, basketball, and a shovel mm-hmm. against Nixon. And, and the pandas, in my imagination, are riding the horses because why not? Absolutely. They're lazy. Yes. 
and they're yeah, they're sleeping on the horses. <laughs> Actually, that's when they take a nap. <laughs> they went and laid there, and there's like I don't know, like five horses. Let's say. Let's say five horses with pandas on top of them. Then you got Nixon, <laughs> who, let's be real here, probably has made some sort of a pact with the devil. Oh. He is now able to hold a seance <laughs> and so use the opens- fleshy freeway that's on fire and screaming and turn that into his a own weapon. kind of kaiju type thing. Oh, does he? Tr- oh, does he operate in like a kaiju? Is he inside the freeway, like operating it and like? Okay, Satan gives him the ability like, to op- to like Pacific be- Rim kind of thing, where he's, yeah, he's yeah, inside, yeah. like a Power Ranger or something, where he's like inside. Yeah, he of the- like what do they do when they like meld with it? Yeah, <laughs> he's just like he- blah, blah, blah. he's just melding <laughs> it. <laughs> Take that! Suddenly- oh, five eighty overpass. <laughs> he like rises, like from the as yeah. if from the ocean, Ooh. rises up and. The legs of the freeway? What are they yeah. called? The legs of the Those freeway, yes. They become giant arms. Okay, so and hang on. No, but here, <laughs> you think but before Nixon we go on, he, yes. The devil? Yes, I think he's going to do that. And you'd think that he's going to go over and take that thing to destroy Nicola first. But what does he yeah. do before that? He walks over because, you know, P- Pixar is in Emeryville, which is right across from the freeway. Uh, Did you know that? The yeah. Pixar Studios. Yeah. First thing he does before he even fights Nicola, destroys Pixar Studios. You know why? <laughs> why? Because of woke, that's why. Because that's oh, what Nixon we're not bringing it. <laughs> woke is not a fire in this battle. No, no, no. Woke because not... he hates woke. Because Nixon would know? just be like, oh, "You and your liberal agenda with your films," and just destroy. That's the first thing okay. he does. Uh, no, no, no. Here's here's a new rule. Here's a rule. We gotta stay within the battlefield. Okay. <laughs> We're staying within the battlefield. We can't destroy Pixar because that's insane. I'm not he destroying would. Pixar. Nixon is. There's also a Target right below there, just FYI. There and there's a Home Depot over there as well. There's These are all things that you can use for pieces, right? Okay. I don't know. This is going totally off the rails. I'm just this having like a very fun time imagining all Keeps these different going. things while I it's on fire. I still think Nicola would win though. So Nicola has, it, this is like turned into like a, a Captain Planet episode or something or Care Bears yeah. where it's like he has the power of heart <laughs> versus the power of like Satan. Yeah, the evil. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Should we flip a so, coin? <laughs> no, no. I think you're right. I think, uh, I think once he gets the battle bot of the yeah. fleshy, which again, by the way, speaking of drawings, it'd be fun to do. Well, the, amazing. Uh, yeah. The fleshy fire, the fleshy freeway that's on fire with Richard Nixon on the inside controlling it. <laughs> I think I just truly pictured it. Yeah. Glorious. It's, we got to sit with that image for a minute. That so does becomes Nicola, like become a horse, like transform into a giant horse. Oh, man? no, even better. He connects the horses and the pandas and then he forms his oh! own. Like Power Rangers. <laughs> yeah. He does <laughs> his own Power Rangers thing. Horse legs. He's like standing. <laughs> He's got pandas for fists. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There it is. Pandas for fists, horses for legs and abs. All right. Yeah, and, and, then, and then he's and then he's punching he's punching the fleshy freeway, and then when he punches, that's when all the shit comes out. Which of course he cleans up afterwards because he's a considerate With, man. Yeah, he's a considerate. But here's the thing: it's living. It's like a big, heavy, concrete living thing versus fleshy pandas and horses who will immediately rip open and die. That's true. Um, <laughs> however, is, does Richard Nixon <laughs> win? <laughs> I don't know. This is going to be tough. Honestly, the only bet that we can have. Uh, is that somehow Nicola draws Nixon out onto the Bay Bridge and he mm. kicks him in and then Nixon drowns in the San Francisco <laughs> Bay. That's, he can't get out of his... He probably can't get out of the suit. No. He's probably not a good swimmer. I don't know for sure one way or another, but I imagine that that's probably what would happen. Okay, Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola Jokic. The that, got <laughs> that got weird. That got weird. Exactly how I wanted it to get. Good. All right. Semifinal Oof. round number two. Two. Gong. Housewife versus the Michelin Man. Sorry, a lobotomized right. housewife versus the Michelin Man. And they're going to be fighting at... <laughs> on a golf course surrounded by sharks. Oh, right. So they can't get out of this golf course because it's surrounded by like little lakes and pockets of sharks. Mm. There are theoretically a bunch of golf clubs lying around uh-huh. that either one of them could use. Yeah, and the golf bubbles. I think Stand right traps. off the bat, the housewife hates golf so much. So much. So it, much more. It's a competition. 
It's so her competition th- for her attention for her, for her husband. So I think it just, I think off the bat, it's already going to be unfair because she's just going to be like super hypercharged of rage right. because of golf. She also has knives, although a Michelin man can eat nails and glass. So what's to say he can't eat knives? That's true. Anything that she throws at him, he's just going to be like, whatever, I'll eat this. It doesn't matter. So is is he full of air like a tire or is he just tires with like, is the air holding him together or does he just have nothing in him? You know, so you're saying like if he gets popped, like he deflates yeah. and he doesn't have any power left. Right. Um, I like to think that there's flesh inside. It's like flesh <laughs> with rubber around it. I think you might be right. <laughs> flesh tires. Flesh you know tires. What? I think that you like to think of there being flesh in everything. Everything is living. Freeways are alive. <laughs> tires are alive. They breathe. They're conscious. <laughs> this desk has flesh in it. Doors. Everything. This podcast, yeah. Mike. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I <laughs> <Disgusting>. think. <laughs> I can't. I can't. This isn't. This is too crazy. This is crazy. I feel insane right now. This is insane. Okay. So we're going to have to bring the sharks into it. You they think? are bull sharks. Yeah, I think I, we're going to have to. They're a more, They're not anyone's side, though. No, so they're not going to be, but it's going to be like somehow that's going to have to affect the outcome of this, I think, in terms of okay. like this being right. an story. Because like you said, they're pretty evenly matched. The yeah. Michelin man is only emboldened. The more things that are thrown at him, he eats them. But and she doesn't so, have to throw. She's dual wielding. Remember, she can just like <laughs> puncture a bunch of holes. But he just eats them. That's the whole point of the ad is that he's just like drinking broken glass and all that shit. He's just like, I'm unaffected by any of this. It doesn't matter. So I I think. I think the Michelin man wins. Okay. Explain why. Because here's here's the thing. If we're in hand-to-hand combat, nothing else involved. Housewife, Super Smash Brothers style. Housewife with knives versus Nicola. Not Nicola. Sorry. The Michelin man. The Michelin man is going to absorb all of her punches, all of her knives. He is way stronger. He's bigger. He's tall and big and scary. Yeah. Remember those like pictures of the guys in the suits? He's, yes. He's he's big. He's made of rubber. He's heavy. So even against her riveting gun, even against all of her knives and her meth strength, I think he's still stronger. I think she'll give him a huge fight because she's ins- she's insane. But I think yeah. in the end, he's heavy enough to just lay on top of her. <laughs> just, just roll around on top of her. Roll around. Okay, don't forget, there are weddings that happen on that golf course. Is there a wedding that day? I there's love that you a, just keep pulling. Because right, I'm remem- I'm remembering all the different <laughs> stuff. So there's the sharks that all showed up for a wedding. Remember that was yeah. like that was what happened on that tab. So yep. does the memory of her own wedding make her more angry and sort of give her another jolt? Yeah, she okay. hates golf. She hates her husband. She hates like the wedding. That it just reminds her that she's married to this person that she hates who lobotomized yeah. her. Are there so things gets... at a wedding that she could use? So obviously the weapons were not obvi- we're not going to work against the Michelin Man. But like we have to figure out what is what's his weakness again? He's French. He's French. Okay. <laughs> and also probably fire. Fire. Okay. I'm going to say this: if he's French, yeah. If that's his weakness, the French <laughs> are probably going to have a weakness of bad food. If the food, oh. if the cuisine is bad and insult, or if it's like a bad presentation of French food, yeah. he'll he, go over he would there get, and try to fix it. He'll get very upset and personally offended and distracted and like have a meltdown. Yeah. So maybe the there's will eat him. the sharks will eat him and they'll eat rubber. That's not good for the sharks, but they'll eat him. He'll, they'll do it. They'll drown him. The Michelin man yeah. can drown. I guess theoretically he could. So if she can get um, if she can get him into the uh, water somehow with all those sharks, they could they could pull him in. They could listen, pull him under. this wedding is going to have bad French food and okay. bad champagne, which is another thing that a French person would be very <laughs> upset about. They're not okay and fake or, croissants. Yeah. Also, it's not I've, even champagne, which is I think technically it has to be from champagne for champagne, it to be champagne. region. Yeah. And he finds so, out it's not. Okay. I'm telling you, this is a little bit more evenly stacked than you think, just not in the same way. It's not just brute force. It's also how does the environment discourage. This person and distract them. Okay. Well, I never wrote that there was a wedding, but if we want to incorporate a wedding into this, then that's fine by me because there were weddings there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wedding with f- terrible champagne, terrible French cuisine. That's the French weakness of the Michelin man. Okay. Uh, and and then at that point. Because how get- is he? The only way he'll die is if you puncture him in whatever rubber heart he has. I don't know. How does okay. he die? 
Can you kill the really, Michelin? I, I was gonna say, can you even kill? I think we've arrived at the end of like the internet where we're like, is it even possible to kill the Michelin Man? I don't know if it is. I don't think he's because he can obviously pull apart his own body to take tires out of it, and that doesn't kill him. No, I think he has to lose the will to live. That's gonna be the only way that we oh. kill the Michelin Man. But he fought the he fought the Nazis <laughs> yeah, because there was there was purpose. The Nazis were trying to kill everybody. I think bad French cuisine. Bad French okay. champagne that's not actually from champagne. These are the things that you, if the housewife figures this out, this is how she takes him down. I'm okay. trying to think of like one more thing that could be the nail in the coffin to kill him. It'd be some other thing that would be like an egregious attack on the French sensibility. Mixing church and state. <laughs> that's a good one. Yes. They don't like that. They don't like mixing of church and state. Um, anything else? I'm trying to think of what else would really just like offend the French person's tastes. Or, but you were thinking, Michelin Man's a global man now. He used to be French, but he's, I don't but know, you said man. He's still, French is his weakness, like you said. I made that up in two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and I took it like it's the word of God. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks. Um, I, I still I think the Michelin know. Man will win. Just, yeah. Okay. All right. Michelin Man it is. Are you, you you good with that? Does that feel I'm right? Be, yeah, yeah. Like you said, my only concern is is that we've now established that the Michelin Man's immortal, and that he can't be killed, which means it doesn't even make sense for him to go to the next round because he's just automatically going to win. Well, we don't know that. That's true. We don't. Okay, this is not what I expected, but the finalists are Nikola Jokic versus the Michelin Man. Dear and Lord. And the, they're going to be ready. <laughs> dong or whatever big noise Doom. they're going to be fighting on the top of mount akatanango 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 oh that is that the one that we mountain. do with Alyssa? oh yeah. with uh oh so one this of is the, the argentine army mountains. the argent <laughs> the argentine army is there you think that was part of the hallucinations right that's right that's right okay so and this mountain, in the episode we did, these hikers got stuck up there and they started hallucinating because there wasn't enough oxygen. So keep that in mind. So uh, these and there's, two. There's theoretically, oh, let's just establish this setting a little bit more. Okay. Right. So there's at least one broken off arm that's in the ice. So yeah, there, there's like a broken off, there's a singular arm poking out, a right. dead guy. There's a father-son his... going on a trip. Remember, we had a father-son yeah. hiking trip where they're going to bring back and... pieces of dead bodies. Yes. <laughs> there There's is, the Argentine um, army. Vivid hallucinations of the Argentine. Vivid hallucinations. Yeah. So because Nicola is human, he will be more susceptible to vi- the hallucinations. That's true. But here's the thing. We got to figure out the Michelin man. If he's, he's, he's He can't be immortal. Nothing's immortal except for Jonathan the tortoise. Yeah. I'm telling you, French, like you said, French is his weakness. So theoretically, he could freeze because he's got no warm blood or anything in him. He could you're just right. be trapped in the ice. Oh. Oh, you're right. Also, like, how does rubber react to ice? Let's just decide right now based on it, no science whatsoever. It gets like rock hard and hard to move, right? Sure. It stops working. We've, we've just decided that that's the case. Yeah. I don't see a lot of cars is, driving around in the mountains. That's probably why. This is why. absurd. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. So also, the Michelin Man has a weird center of gravity, like mass. So like, if mm-hmm. he's hiking this mountain, I could easily see him just like... Whoa, oh, falling like, top, over and just bouncing all, all the way down to the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Blonk, 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 blonk. And then I could just see... you know. But here's the thing. Nicola is gigantic. And gigantic mm. people don't survive as long as it's small not people. great. Yeah, it's no. much harder for him to climb. Are they? They're at the top of the mountain. You said right. Um, at the very top. We can do near the top because well, the top. No, let's say the top of the mountain. Right. Okay, so he's barely alive. They're both barely alive. <laughs> okay, Nicola can easily push the Michelin Man off the mountain, and he would bounce and roll all the way down and, and shatter into a million pieces because he's made of icy rubber. Oh, now. he's glass rubber now. Yeah. Okay. That's how rubber then, works. <laughs> but like you said, he's uh, he's also like hallucinating and out of it and just yeah. like, Ugh. well, considering that's a hallucination. Yeah. I think we pick one more to bring into this. Oh, and this is going to be the hallucination that they see? Yes. And then we'll see how the, each one of them reacts to this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I chose <laughs> the ball of debris, the Katamari <gasps> ball of debris. 
that came from the Johnstown flood. <laughs> oh my so, god! <clears throat> so okay, this is this is great because now shit this just is like got fun. real. Yeah. So this this thing, if you haven't listened, it's like episode I don't know five, five and six, I think. And this thing, this dam collapsed in Johnstown, Ohio, Ohio, whatever, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. Whatever. I wrote Ohio. Um, and it <laughs> it slowly this big wall of water collected stuff as it went down this valley. And inside this thing is barbed wire, oil, train cars, scrap metal, and twisted steel beams all racing down the, racing toward you at like a top speed. It's on fire too. Don't forget. It I forgot. It's on fire. But there's no, yeah. like very little oxygen up there. So I don't think the fire can. Also, it turns to ice because it's up at <gasps> top of the mountain where it's cold. So it's just literally a gigantic ball of debris. Which the Michelin man, despite saying that he can take everything, that might be the ball that's too big for him. It might you be think? the thing that breaks his back. Yeah. And how does Nikola get out of this? I think he just by default because <laughs> <laughs> No. no <laughs> because no the catamari by default. <laughs> I think the catamari ball is too big. It's too okay. big f- even for the Michelin man. You think? Okay, I think so. Let's, let's put them both under like a stress test of the Katamari ball. Okay. Nicholas' human fleshy body is going to be destroyed way faster. He just gets than... absorbed into it. Yeah, he dies. <laughs> so it's just a matter of if he can like dodge it and then like. But if at the top of the mountain, where's this thing coming from? A UFO sc- that's oh dropping my gosh, it. You're right. You're the right. same UFO that was re riveted by the. <laughs> we. <laughs> by the we lobotomized are so housewife. Off, off course. <laughs> Please continue listening to this show despite this Please. episode. We would really appreciate it. It's fun. We had a great time. We're just trying something new. Um, let's just say it okay. flies in. Because remember, there's a, <laughs> okay. a, a, the South Fork Dam, right? It's up on by the, the hunting and yeah. fishing club. So it just go, pops out from there. So we could just say it somehow flies up in the air and, and lands on top of the mountain. And as, it's, as the water is flying, it turns into ice. And as it turns into ice, it heads to the top of the mountain. And Nicola... And the Michelin man are watching as this thing approaches them. So Nicola, okay. who's hallucinating with low oxygen, uh, and <laughs> you know, it's much harder for him because he's so much taller, is sort of like yeah. wobbling. And the Michelin man is looking at it like a challenge. It's different. He's just like, Oh, I can eat anything. His hubris makes him think he can take it on. So he's gonna try to eat the debris ball? I think so. I think he's like he's filming it like on a phone. He's just like, like and subscribe, like and subscribe, watch me live stream <laughs> while I eat this giant ball. There's nothing that could take down a Michelin. Like and subscribe, thumbs up, hit it's that like bell, LA ring Beast. that bell. Yeah. Have you ever seen LA Beast? No, what is that? It's just this dude who eats until he throws it off and puts it on YouTube. <laughs> I've seen um, Matt Stoney, I think is his name, the guy that eats oh, yeah. a bunch of stuff, but he doesn't throw up, at least not on camera. Um, okay, we're losing that's what steam I think. because neither of us know what to do. You think, think Nicola wins? I think Nicola wins because he sees a ball coming at him and he instinctually um, knows. Okay, so here's what I think. All right. So in this scenario, the Michelin man... His hubris has taken over. He's live streaming it because he's trying to get more followers and he's trying to like grow his YouTube channel. <laughs> He gets his mouth as large as possible because he's like, I'm, they said I couldn't, but I'm going to eat like the biggest bunch of scraps like that have ever existed to prove to you that Michelin is the greatest brand. And as he's doing that, Nicola for a split second comes into um, consciousness and he sees a ball and he sees a giant, like essentially a hoop because it's a tire and he (laughs) musters up the last of his strength and he jumps and he grabs this ice ball and then slam dunks it into the mouth of the Michelin man and the Michelin man <laughs> and all of his hubris cannot in fact take that much debris. He does have a limit and he explodes and it just shards <laughs> of everything everywhere. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, <laughs> give, me a se- give me a second. Listen, that is the most scientifically accurate outcome. I think. Okay, I'm going to go a little more realistic route. I like your thing. I like what you're saying. Okay, no, no, yes, no, 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 no. If it comes down to, they're both in the... What, maybe we should take that Katamari ball out. Actually, no, it's it. No! It's it. great. We brought it in! Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm Something really anatomy. attached to this outcome. 
I, I know, and I'm really not. So I, I think that even if the Michelin Man, okay, this ball is gigantic. Right. It's like a mile wide, right? <laughs> it's gigantic, not that big. <laughs> I if I I think it's like probably about forty feet tall, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. If if we're gonna go with like the wave and just turn it into a, let's just say it's forty feet. Nicola wow. is not superhuman. He can't think of a forty foot wide ball of ice and debris and slam it down a Michelin man's throat. <laughs> L- listen, the Michelin I mean, man's not real. What does matter? <laughs> He just fought Richard Nixon in a the Richard Nixon kaiju in a giant flesh robot suit. No, Nicola did. But what's I'm saying? It's like, what does it matter if like the oh, if, true. Okay, if, okay. if the Michelin right, Man right. is real or reality? But sorry, okay, go okay. ahead, finish the thought. But flesh versus rubber, rubber's gonna win, even if it gets eviscerated. He's still gonna survive. That's You're it. That's You're saying my that argument. even if even if the pieces are broken up, it will still not yes. be dead. It can be put back together. Whereas <laughs> if Nicola explodes, immortal. he's gone. I think the Michelin Man is indestructible. I think you have to burn know. him like a vampire. Burn rubber. Ugh. Oh, if he catches on fire, he'll never stop because those like tire fires last forever. I'm, I'm, I don't know, I man. Have to... I, I have my vote. My vote is that I think that the the ending I gave is 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 funny and poetic, and Nicola comes out on top, and the All right. Michelin Man's hubris ends him. That's my vote. Yeah. But what does your final say? Michelin man. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever you believe in your heart. It sounds like in your heart you don't believe that Nicola will win. I believe the Michelin man would win. Okay. Maybe it's a tie. It's a tie. Maybe. Maybe neither of them die. I've never I've never been in a situation like this before. I don't know how it works. Maybe the mountain the mountain wins. Mountain wins. (laughs) They both die. They both would die. The Katamari ball would win. That's true. But in this case, I think the Katamari ball has been introduced as like an agent of chaos, not like a third yeah, person for them to compete It's not a third with. party. Yeah. I think you got to just make a decision. I did. It's the Michelin man. Okay. Hannah Should incorrectly flip- predicts no. that the we Michelin man is- <laughs> We're going to flip a coin. <laughs> Wait, We're going to flip of... this. We're going to flip this sand, this- uh, um, Sand disc. Sand disc thing, okay? The SD logo card. side. SD card. Logo side is Michelin man. Blank side is Nicola, okay? That actually worked really well. Michelin man. <sighs> Boo. <laughs> Michelin man is our winner. He is, what does he get? Um, He gets to kill us. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Normally where we'd be closing tabs, we decided that the winner of this matchup gets to Baja blast us into the bog. Yes, and, and the as such, man is going to be the one who does it. He's going to be willing to do it. Um, do we have what? Do you, how is he going to Baja blast us? Is it just like burning boing. rubber? Oh, boing? yeah, just like boing, just like boing. smack us in with his rubbery body. Okay, uh, I guess there's no tabs <laughs> to close, but we could just count it down. Okay, so just do yeah, rubber boingy boing, and then we flop into the box. <laughs> I'm yeah, exhausted. Why yeah, am I so tired? Okay. Because that was long. That was hard. <laughs> Three, two, two, one. One. All right. <clears throat> Moving on. Oh. Thank you guys. That was a lot of fun. We got we some are time going to, to do listener Yeah, let's mail. do listener emails. Let's keep, uh, we've got a little <laughs> bit of, of normalcy for this one. Gavi, thanks for humoring me. That was really That was fun. a lot of fun. Thanks for doing all that. I can't believe yeah. you were able to uh, do it so well and that you had an excellent uh, chart and everything and you filled all the information out. It was a lot of fun oh, to do it. Can I tell you the, the ones that weren't drawn just for fun? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's hear them. Jonathan the Tortoise, 70 semi-trained movie lions, <laughs> Felix Carvajal, like the runner that in the uh, Boston, the no, postman. in the marathon. The postman. Uh Thomas Blood with a mallet. Tom Blood. Uh, Frank Dukes. Yes. And 30 Drunk Monks. 30 Drunk Monks. It would have been funny to see the 30 Drunk Monks versus the semi-trained lions. (laughs) Yeah, it would have. Anyway. All right. On to listener emails. Email number one is Andres from Spain. You've heard of Spain, correct? No. uh, It's a country. 
in I know. Europe. <laughs> I don't know. No. I know I've you never know. Heard of her. My name never is heard of her. Andres, and I listen to your podcast from Spain. First of all, excuse my English. I can listen and read it very well, but I'm a mess writing and speaking it. Hey, Andres, guess what? So, so far, are we. <laughs> so are we. Also, you sound great. Everything's been correct. Agreed. Right into my tab. Always when I start a new job, I do a little research about who is the patron saint of that specific job. That is amazing. So far, I've worked assembling furniture. St. Joseph, who was a carpenter. That's the saint. Oh, yeah. On a car factory line, Saint San Cristobal, and a writer, oh. Saint Francis of Sales. These are the saints that are corresponding to all those jobs. Um, I'm an atheist, but I find it fun. <laughs> yeah. N- nowadays, I work fixing photocopying machines, and I found out that back in the early days when the monks and the medieval copyists worked on a manuscript, they did not have a saint. They had a little devil. <laughs> what? It was called, you ready for this? Yeah. Titty Villis. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Who stole all the little mistakes they made while writing and count them in hell to use against the monks on their judgment day. Whoa. It's like, uh, who is it, St. Peter that like takes all your yeah, stats? Yeah. This is like the de- the devil version of that. The devil version. He, he's way to the but gates of hell. It's more like you misspelled, like you used their <laughs> T-H-E-R-E oh, instead of no. apostrophe R-E after the Y. That, that is kind of hell. Thing. Yeah. That is hell. Somebody correct uh, me on that. That's just going, growing up with an English major older sister. Shout out. Uh, oh. I find, <laughs> <laughs> oh. I find amazing concern. that there's literally no patron for the people who literally wrote biblical texts all the time. Thank <laughs> you so much for your podcast. And if you want to know, the patron saint of the illustrators is St. Lucas. From Andres. Oh, uh, also, I, I did see uh, he does include a uh, uh, link to um, just the Wikipedia page, which we'll include in the notes, of course. But there's some a couple of images you can see of what of this. Of St. Lucas? No, no, no. Of um, what was it called? Titivis? Oh, yeah. Titivis. Titivillis. Titivillis. A couple of images that I've shared with you that you can see. Oh, look at him. Oh, I love him. He's looking he's stealing all those books. Uh, and then the last one, he's in the bottom right corner. And it's like the body of an insect with like a weird <laughs> Let me see. monk on top. It's a very strange oh. looking thing. Oh, I don't. He's got glasses and a walking stick, but lizard legs. It's pretty cool. I mean, wow. <laughs> this is amazing. I would have absolutely loved to be one of those guys who like made all those weird little animals in the columns 100%. of the. All right. Thank you, Andres. Second email is from Mary from Indianapolis, and it's mm-hmm. titled Strychnine Poisoning. Hi, Kava and Hannah. I just finished listening to Marathon Moon, wherein a 1904 marathon runner was given strychnine to help him run. You were asking if anyone could tell oh, you right. how it works. <laughs> the rat poison. Yeah, the rat poison. Uh, you may well hear from more qualified people, but I am a veterinarian and pulled up my old toxicology notes. Oh. So obviously, big disclaimer that this could work entirely different in people. <laughs> Who knows? So this is if a dog ingests strychnine. <laughs> Essentially, strychnine works on cells in a specific region of the spinal cord, and that causes uncontrolled exaggerated reflex arcs in motor neurons. This leads to muscle spasms and hyperextension of limbs and body. Whoa. It causes death from respiratory failure between 10 minutes to 48 hours. Strychnine poisoning in dogs looks very similar to tetanus. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because this is all about dogs. (laughs) (laughs) I I believe since in small doses, the more severe effects are delayed, they were looking to just improve muscle contractions. Like if you were fatigued from running 26 miles without water Mm. and your muscles had no energy to contract on their own. Today, we have much safer stimulants that also you probably shouldn't use in an Olympic marathon. Probably not. It, no, don't. It is still used as a rodenticide. Oh, still uses rat poison. Rat poison, yeah. But due to EPA laws, only by licensed pest control of applicators. I do think any other uh, rat poison would be even worse to take during an Olympic marathon. It has also been mixed into street drugs, so that's a thing. Whoa. Hopefully this was her- helpful, unless an actual human toxicologist wrote in, Mary from Indianapolis, and they say that there's no link because this was off of a Word document from 2018 that is a 50-page study guide that you do not want. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. a veterinarian. Thank that you, Mary. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
That sounds awesome. Animals, we uh, l- listen. At the end of the day, we're all just animals. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. We're all just made of flesh, like the freeway. Like, like the freeway, exactly. Thank you, Mary from Indianapolis, for your submission, as well as Andres from Spain. If you also have an email that you would like to submit of a tab that you have recently closed that we inspired you to do, please go ahead and send it to us. 500 open tabs at Gmail. That's 500. Give us a little blurb. Let us know what you learned briefly and also include the link. And most importantly, let us know where you're from because it excites us to find friends across the world. And uh, if you want to follow us, uh, we're at 500 open tabs on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube, especially there's really fun videos on there. And you can also join our Patreon and uh, subscribe monthly and you can see extra stuff. Yeah. Uh, critically, at this point in time, the date that this comes out, uh, we are two weeks away, I think, from the beginning yeah. of Comic-Con. So Jul- the week of July, the Wednesday, July 24th is when Comic-Con starts. Um, as of right now, unless we say otherwise, we will have a panel on mm-hmm. that Saturday. Uh, details PM. to come at 1 p.m. We are going to be posting about it incessantly by the time this probably drops. Um, mm-hmm. But we're going to be, uh, we have some wonderful, wonderful guests that we're very excited about. I'm not just saying that. We are actually really excited. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have a we discussion. Have a good lineup. We've got a good lineup and we're going to be having a discussion about building community outside of the uh, typical social media channels. And algorithm. And, yeah. and algorithms. So it's called Escaping the Algorithm is the name of the panel. So we got some <laughs> guests on there that we're going to talk about it. We're going to probably film it. So we'll probably put it up on. Yeah. <clears throat> YouTube as well afterwards. But if you're in San Diego, if you're going to be at Comic-Con, please, please come to the convention and come, I'm sorry, come to the panel. And if you're not going to sure. be there, but you know a friend that's going to be there, tell them, hey, go yeah. to this panel. It's really important. We're also going to be adding some fun uh, podcast specific fu- uh, things to have. To, to <laughs> What am I trying to say? We're going to be having a, a scavenger hunt. Scavenger hunt. Uh, we're going to be handing out really cool fans for all the warm people fans. that are out there waiting in line and all the fans of the show as well on it there will be information about a scavenger hunt and if you find yep. and take pictures of the stuff that's on the fan you can bring it back to our table at bb01 in artist alley and we will give you a fun reward it's a really fun reward it is we've been going insane trying to make these happen at the time of this recording we still haven't finished making them but no. in theory they will exist very little yeah no we've done a quite a bit <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long thing long time coming we've been doing this anyway uh you can follow me at hannah hillam on everything uh you can follow me i'm at perma friends on instagram basically um and of course we're 500 open tabs i think you said that on everything yeah oh discord discord follow us on the discord uh-huh. follow the discord follow all the links follow the sponsor links give us good reviews Just tell all it. your friends tell your friends tell, tell your friends, your friends. Above all, tell your friends. Tell your Please. friends. Um, thank you guys for listening so far that we have yeah. 25 episodes. Thank you, Hannah, for making this crazy, <laughs> insane episode and putting it together. It was yeah, no really problem. a lot of fun to do. Um, this was an experiment for us where we thought maybe we'll do something like this every 25 episodes because we have a tendency. I don't know, Hannah, I think you're the same way where uh, as soon as I do something or draw something mm-hmm. or write something and then it's done, I forget that I ever did it. And yep, then I don't remember any of the things that I've created. And then I'm like, oh, I've never created anything in my life. So oh, yeah. to have a recap at 25 to be able to look back at all the insane stories that we've threaded out is kind of fun to do. So we'd like to do this like every 25 just to sort of remember them and then maybe thread them all together somehow into a giant mega super duper story. Yeah, not. but we're like. We're both like it's in our sixties. We're like, well, it, Michelin Man still yeah. wins. <laughs> Michelin uh, Man is made of mozzarella, and Billy Bob <laughs> is there eating all the food. I don't know why my accent came in, but we're that's just, what happens. We're just you're an old Southern man. We just yeah. get wheeled away. We're just talking into like mm, I had a podcast, a, a, a hairbrush, thinking it's a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did. I will say, I listened to all the episodes again to get all the info. Oh yeah, for this and. Uh, we're insane. <laughs> yes. That's... I did not need to listen to the podcast to know that. Was <laughs> there one that you found particularly unhinged in retrospect? Um, The first. <laughs> the yeah. first one? Right out the gate. Right out the gate. No, the uh, exploding whale one was pretty unhinged in that it was just disgusting. Mm-hmm. And then um, 
another particularly unhinged one was Roar with the Lions. That was a fun one. Uh, and I go by unhinged because like we were both laughing so hard. Like we we do laugh a lot. We do have a lot too, of fun. Too much. Um, but yeah, no, there's some there's some pretty crazy stuff. Most of the ones we just make stuff up. <laughs> we just yeah, make a lot true. of characters up. Anyway. Well, thank thank you for 25 great episodes. Thank you to Alyssa for getting us over thank the line. You. For piecing Alyssa. these all together. Uh, of course, thank you, Joe, for helping us get all this stuff together in time for Comic-Con as well. And most importantly, thank you, the listener, for continuing mm-hmm. to listen to this podcast. I assume this will be the last one you ever listen to. But I promise next week we'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a guest. <laughs> we'll have a guest. And it'll be great. Uh, anyway, yep. until then, keep it Josie, everyone. Keep it Josie. I guess we salute now. Why not? <laughs> <laughs>